You have just seen the case study film Otto. Here to provide an interpretation of the film from the analytic perspective is Dr. Bruce Denner. Dr. Denner is university professor in the College of Human Learning and Development at Governor State University, Park Forest South, Illinois, and is in private practice in Olympia Field, Illinois. Dr. Denner, what is Otto's problem? Does he have one? What's the nature of it if he does? Well, surely Otto has a problem, and his wife has a problem. Boss has a problem. There are many problems here. Now, the first thing that's obvious is that we're seeing some evidence of historical regression. Otto is returning to earlier uh, enjoyments, flying a kite. But from an analytic perspective, what's more important than the <coughs> historical regression is the formal regression. Let me explain. Otto, as production manager, is in control of his life. He is sublimating a certain impulses by being extremely compulsive, orderly, and mechanical. But it's clear right from the beginning that there's a leakage, there's a problem here. There are other impulses coming to the fore. And the question is how to conceptualize this. In doing so, I, th I think we have to see what sort of defense mechanisms are beginning to replace the more mature forms of sublimation through work. I think one that's very obvious is projection. Otto is beginning to accuse others. Now, of course, there's always ambiguity. People may be doing them in. The secretary may be messing up the calendar, and the young man, Mark, may be taking his job but Otto is overreacting. He's going too far. He's putting too much emphasis in it, and he's projecting his fears onto them, and they're coming back, you're doing something to me. I think we see it most clearly when he projects onto his wife, when his wife is saying, touch me, let's become intimate, and he says to her, you are suggesting I'm a queer. Now this, of course, is a classical kind of situation of a certain kind of character, what we call the anal compulsive character, is typically defending against feelings of intimacy, aggression, and dependency. And often, at that stage of development, these feelings have, uh, we note, a homosexual overtone. That is, it isn't, Otto is frightened about any contact. He doesn't want to get too close. So, the emergence of the projection suggests regression away from the more mature sublimation and back to earlier forms of behavior. Now we could ask why. Why is this happening? Well the most superficial answer has to do with environmental events. There's certain job pressures, you know, new work assignments, difficulties. But Otto has always had difficulties. I think more important than the work is the marriage and in general, uh, the feeling I got was that Otto's failing powers, he's getting older. And we know that uh, what anal compulsive characters are always concerned with is performance. And perhaps he isn't uh, able to have intercourse as often as he wants to. He's beginning to doubt himself. I think we have to speculate further that Otto's problem has historical roots in the relationship with his mother. That at some point in development when he was being taken care of by his mother, let's say through the toilet training period, because we know that this is critical for the anal compulsive character, that there were frustrated needs here, that his mother uh, called him messy, that he didn't do it like a good boy. There's sort of a hitch left back there. I would say that this kind of hitch remains in his character until certain environmental situations occur where it becomes difficult for him to cope with these needs. As he gets older, he may have to be more dependent on his wife. He's losing his powers. So Otto reinforces his struggle for cleanliness and orderliness. The calendar, he produces this big calendar. It's as if the calendar were like his mother because the calendar is something he could become dependent upon. It keeps him clean. He keeps it clean. It sets order into his life. 
And I would suggest further, too, that the secretary is the good mother. The secretary is the one who forgives Otto all the time for messing up. But unfortunately, the secretary has another aspect. That there is part of her that's the bad mother. When Otto observes through the door that she, you know, puts him down, talks about him negatively, it's clear to Otto at this point that the good mother is never really good. That in the end, it's rejection. All the time she's leading him on, saying, you're so good and you're so wonderful. But look, he's dirty and no good again. And I would make the same point with regard to his wife at the uh, bridge table. Wife says, I don't so wonderful. Such a source of strength. But who can live up to such strength? And then when he shows any kind of weakness, she turns on him. It's as if the mother said to him, you're such a good little boy. You do everything so perfect. And then he messes up once. And the mother says, you dirty. You're dirty. And now he's, can he accept his mother? Can he believe that he's ever clean? Now we see them in the park. This is a very important scene for me, where they're walking through the park. And she says to him, do you have any dreams? And he talks about the kite. You have a feeling of regressing backward to an earlier stage, a kind of unity of nature. It reminds me of his picking of the flower. And she presses, let me in, let me in, let's do it together. And I was very impressed with the way Otto turned away, kind of shock. Now, why the shock? I think in Otto's mind, his wife is being somehow tied symbolically with his mother, as his secretary is. And that he can't treat his wife as a separate human being, as someone independent. And he's beginning, his wife is suggesting incest symbolically, one might say. And that she's reawaking all these Oedipal concerns. Now, added to that, let's look at what the boss is doing. Here he comes and brings this new fellow, Mark. Nice guy, but what is he? He's a rival. He, too, is pressing the Oedipal issue. He's being attacked on both fronts. What can he do? What is his choice? I don't mean that he willfully chooses. But I mean, psychodynamically, the pressures, the energies go in one direction. He moves back from even the anal solution. And I see him moving back to a more oral posture. He's moving into psychosis, which is an oral level of functioning. And um, towards the end of the film, very critical. Otto is watching TV, but maybe he isn't. Maybe he's hallucinating. He goes to bed with his wife and his eyes are open. I think the reality principle is breaking down. His wife talks to him and he responds like, uh, in a very almost childlike way. She insists that he goes to the doctor and it's almost, uh, oh yes, mommy. You know, I have a feeling that isn't his wife anymore. And then Otto disappears out into the field with the kite. Now you could say it's just a man flying a kite early in the morning. And if we knew nothing else, maybe that's all we would see. But uh, the way I see it is that he is going to an earlier stage where the kite and the fields and Otto are involved in a kind of primitive fusion where there's a kind of narcissistic identification with the kite, almost as if flying a kite is a substitute for a sexual act with his wife. He's left the bed to fly the kite. It's like a masturbatory fantasy. And at that point, he isn't flying a kite. He's, un he's a union with the kite, with his mother. And uh, it's a very primitive condition. And I think that what Otto is bypassing by going into this orality is his fears and concerns about his dependency needs. He makes this very clear at the bridge game that affection is linked with uh, death. Now, there's a funeral. And people are talking about showing affection at funerals. And Otto will have none of it. I believe that for Otto, to be warm, to be intimate, is to, be, to die. And he must avoid that. And he avoids that by just fusing with his environment and not relating to another, but almost uh, identifying and fusing with the other. He also is bypassing the aggressive drives. Otto makes an interesting point. He's um, ambivalent about whether he's a workhorse or a warhorse. 
There's anger in this man. Aggressive drives, which he's avoiding by avoiding talking about the funeral and by picking that flower. He's saying, I'm not angry. I don't have hostility. I'm, I'm just a peaceful character. I'm identifying with the earth, the earth mother or what you will. And this way, Otto is avoiding the torment at dealing with these aggressive drives. Well, considering this analysis then, how would you deal with him in treatment? Suppose the police have brought him to you because the wife has said, take him to Dr. Denner, who is his family doctor. What would you do? Of course, as an analyst, I believe in autonomous therapy. There's no way in which I would treat someone that was brought by someone else. Uh, he has to willingly enter into a relationship with me. Nor would I relate to anyone else once I had a relationship. I wouldn't call his wife or talk to the police or talk to his boss. What I would ask him to do, however, is not to make any changes in his life. That's one thing in our contract. That is not quit the job, not try any harder, but not try, keep everything status quo. And even in our relationship, I would not ask him to do anything. The focus of our relationship would be to get into a transference situation where I take on properties of early figures in his life and he has the opportunity of working out his conflicts. Whether he then goes back to work at the job or takes on a new job or leaves his wife, that's up to him. Nor would I pass judgment. What I'm interested in is bringing him to a level of maturity so that he could handle his drives. How he handles them in the real world is his business. Well, thank you, Dr. Denner. Now to discuss the presentation, we have Dr. Gary Stolick representing the phenomenological position, Dr. Richard Price, the social position, and Dr. John Gottman, the behavioral perspective. What do you have to say, gentlemen, about the analytic perspective that you've just heard? I'm very persuaded in the way you speak and the way you're, you're analyzing that you really feel that that kite flying is a sickness and a symptom. What makes you so sure of that? Well, I, of course, I don't feel that flying a kite is a sickness. I have to take it in the context of mm -hmm. the situation. But I, I, I feel you're asking me, is there a sickness? Can one distinguish between sickness no, and I health? I want to say something more, is that you're saying it's a bad, that this man yes. is sick and his behavior is bad. Not, but not in a moral sense, but rather in a, um, in a scientific sense. Although sometimes psychoanalysis is not seen as scientific. But from my point of view, one can analyze the development of an organism as he passes through certain stages. And that's what I'm doing. And I'm saying certain behavior is appropriate to certain stages and certain behavior is inappropriate. And that the goal of life is a genital relationship and operating at a certain level of functioning in which one can integrate certain drives and satisfy them. I'm not saying he shouldn't fly a kite. I'm saying that he should integrate these impulses into his daily life so that he has intercourse with his wife, so that he works at his job, and that he can function as a mature being. Anything less than that is to do him a disservice. I think he has the potential. But I think it's a, an organismic truth. It comes out of his instincts, out of his body. It isn't something that I'm imposing upon him. But right then and there, why do you have to say he has to have intercourse with his wife, or he has to be a certain way? Well, it's like having a normal temperature. You could say, why can't you have 103? I mean, you could have 103. Oh, but you bring up a very good one, that for you the range of normality is so constricted between 98.4 and 98 point to 99. And if you say normal, normality has to be so constricted... Oh, but I think Otto's very constricted now because I think he's experiencing a loss of control wherein he can only fly a kite. If nothing happens, he'll be on a hospital grounds flying a kite. He won't be able to go to work. So from my point of view, I want to give him <coughs> the strength to do both. And there's a sense in which I hear you saying that Otto is suffering a kind of character flaw. Um, do you think that he would have developed the difficulties that he did under different circumstances, or do circumstances really make a difference from your point of view? I think that these resurgence of dependency needs would have happened probably in any event, except maybe in very restricted environments. 
Perhaps if he married an entirely different woman who wouldn't press him for intimacy. Or maybe he were a bachelor and there were no woman in his life. I think Otto also has aggressive needs that aren't being integrated. He might have done better in the military. Maybe as, a, as an unmarried military man, so he could vent his aggressive needs. He might have achieved a more stable level of functioning. But there's something else. He picks up that flower. There's something about Otto that's coming back. And uh, so that he's not in equilibrium. He Do you say coming back? And as a phenomenologist, I say that is to live in the present is to have a multitude of experience, a multitude of desires. And I can love my work and I can also love a flower. And why does that have to be a conflict for you? Why do you have to see one as a regression and the other one as a little bit more healthy? Well, because I think it is in conflict, because it is so painful for him. I mean, if he could just go out and fly the kite, I mean, I doubt very much whether he's going to say to the police, well, I'm just flying my kite, what do you care? I think he'll be mute when they walk over. And I'll say, what are you doing, buddy? And he may say, he is a kite. See. He's not operating at the reality principle. I agree with you. If he could say, I'm flying a kite, what do you want from me? That's a healthy man. But if he says, I am a kite, you know, he talks crazy, that's psychosis. You've really been talking mostly about the weaknesses in Otto's character. Are there any strengths that Otto can use to build on? Yes, I, I, think, that, I think he does have strengths. I think that he has achieved a certain level of functioning. He can bind these aggressive energies and he can use that kind of orderly compulsive thing he shows a, a fairly good profession you know in fact he's in danger with his promotion but the long-range plans are not for him what's for him are little details and putting them together would this strength in detail be something that would be useful in therapy is that an asset for no therapy? no in fact it may be a deterrent uh, in, I don't know it will prove to be a difficult patient because I don't know how much capacity there is for self-exploration. First of all, he may become extremely paranoid. And rightfully so, if he's picked up by the police. I would see this is a very difficult case, taking a long while for him to establish that kind of relationship. Let me, let me ask you then. Uh, you say that it will take a long while. You expect it to be difficult. And yet you expect him to maintain a status quo. And from my point of view, I see here... Um, a really an escalating situation where he's becoming increasingly less able to deal with the stresses he's under. What about that? What will you do for him? I'm not so sure that he's less able. You know? I mean, I see him rebounding, mm -hmm. coming back. I mean, we, we always see ambivalence, right? Mm -hmm. Going here and going there. He's not going in one direction. And he could, you know what we missed? The rebound with the police. Now that's critical. Depending upon how he handled that, if he said, uh, stop picking on me, I'm only flying a kite, that's in between the more mature, I'm only flying a kite. But if he starts bawling like a child, then, well, you know, psychoanalysis, I think, works best with the outpatient. Once he were caught by the police and put in an institution, I think we would have a lot of difficulty. What would you do differently if he, uh, if he did start saying, I'm the kite? Well, to the extent that he began to cause act out and became totally psychotic, I personally couldn't work in that situation. I couldn't work in an institution because I think once he was placed in an institution, they would have certain goals. Mm -hmm. and, and I feel that, but that's unfortunate, but that's reality. Society's built these institutions. They interfere with my work, but what can I do? I sense, in one sense, that you lose the experiencing of Otto in a symbolic system because it's critical to you to be correct in the analysis and to be able to see where the person is in some continuum of disintegration. That's funny because I see that just the opposite. I feel because I can see the, the uh, kite as possibly a masturbatory thing. I'm closer to his experience. That I can see the symbolic value of the characters around him. I think I'm closer to his psychotic transformation of the world. You're describing a long-term analysis. How will Otto, how will Otto's wife be helped during the period of time that he's in analysis. Their marriage is uh, very tentative uh, at best. I mean, do you have anything to offer him while he's in analysis? <clears throat> Again, I think we have to be realistic. I'm not in a position to control his wife and his wife's decisions. She may take a lover. She may decide to go off 
to back to her mother or what have you. Nor do I feel that I'm in the position to control his boss. I don't think that is the role of the therapist. What I have to provide Otto with is self-realization and mastery. And if I begin to interfere with the characters around him, I'm just fostering more dependency. By providing some structure to the, to the conflict situations, he'd be playing right into the, the very conflicts that Yes, and, and, and by offering suggestion and advice, it doesn't allow him to project <coughs> in the relationship and to symbolically uh, uh, express these conflicts. I mean, if I treat it on a realistic level, I'm ignoring the internal impulse. I'm ignoring the unconscious. I have to become, in a kind of way, vague and unrelated to his reality so he could project upon me and open up to me. Otherwise, we have this kind of rational discussion. Do you think you ought to be nicer to your wife? Or how about trying a little harder on work? I think that that, that has a limited influence because that ignores the unconscious needs. And that is making what is irrational rational. And in the end, uh, it, it can't win, it, at, or win at a tremendous cost. You see, that's another thing I'm concerned about. I mean, if we program him more and get him better defended, which sometimes we do, but if we do this, I don't, he won't enjoy bridge. He won't enjoy the flowers. He really won't. And I'm really interested in him enjoying that, but in integrating, and that's the key word, that he integrates it in the total experience rather than just falling prey to the impulses. Is it correct that I hear in what you're describing a kind of hidden agenda or notion that, that to accept social conditions as they are is maturity, and um, to fail to accept them, to rebel, to back away, somehow to, to back away from, in some cases, absurd demands is somehow immature? Uh, yes and no depending upon how you back away. If you back away from, from the social conditions by ignoring them or distorting them and not seeing them for what they are and accusing others in a random or haphazard manner, that's inappropriate. If you do it in another way, that is, if Otto contrived the plan to get rid of Mark or to make sure to keep him in his place or the boss, which I found particularly obnoxious, then that's fine. But in a way, he's giving in to the boss. He's treating the boss as if he's omnipotent. He's treating him as a father figure. Whatever the boss says is, yes, yes. I mean, so he's operating at a level where he can't challenge society. And in the end, the police will come, and now he's in trouble. Because in their hands, anything he says will be labeled as crazy. So he's sliding into devaluing himself. I want Otto to value himself. But to do so, he has to perceive accurately. He can't be distorting things and treating people like symbols. And that giant calendar of his, you know, it's an exaggeration. It's true that you have to order your life, but a calendar that big? You know, next will have the whole wall as the calendar. It, it's no good. It's out of hand. It's getting out of hand. See, I sense that you think it's getting out of hand, mm -hmm. and your analysis says it's getting out of hand. I don't feel, when I see it, that anything is out of hand. There are moments of hurt and moments of pain, and that each of the separate moments can be felt and don't have to be related to other moments, and that the joy of the flower in the beginning can be seen full circle to the joy of flying a kite at five in the morning with pajamas on in a private place. I don't think there's any joy there. I think it's compulsive. See, the difference is your certainty. See, you have a certainty. See, he's avoiding his wife sexually. Now the question is, is he just bored with her? Is she unexciting anymore, undesirable? Does he have a little girl on the side? Now that's a, entirely different. If every time he gets in bed with her, he gets nauseous, and he can't get, he can't look at her. Now that to me is a critical difference. In other words, whether his play behavior is compulsively and neurotically driven or whether it's freely chosen. Now, you are assuming, Gary, I think, that it's freely chosen. Oh, I think I'll fly a kite. But I think he's being driven to fly a kite. The thing that, that confuses me is how you could be proved wrong. And Gary, I think you would consider valid his statement about his experience and how he related his experience. But you, Bruce, would, would say that a lot of his experience, his personal experience, was unavailable to him. 
I think he's not processing it accurately. Okay, yeah. so so even if he if he denied what you said was going on, the way he was seeing his secretary, the way he was seeing intimacy, his dependency needs, his aggressive needs, you would still be right. Well, I, I think I'm right, but it's the denial. You're right. His denial wouldn't be important. It would be how he would deny it. If I said to him, this calendar is too much, it reminds you, you're dependent upon that the way you would depend upon your mother. And he said, no, I don't think so, versus he started to yell and scream and throw things at me. Now, you could see the difference between that. One is a reasonable man disagreeing, and one is a man who's, you know, reacting too much. But see, there's another problem, and I think this is what really gives people problems with an analytic interpretation. There's the concept of overdetermination. We're not dealing with single causes. You know, when I say the calendar is his mother, I'm not saying that it's his mother. I'm saying it stands for his mother. But or like all symbols, it could stand for many things. So there may be part of his father in it, too. You have decided as a therapist what the rules of your relationship. Mm -hmm. He has to sign another kind of contract. And I'm saddened by your lack of willingness to confront him with the kite, to be with him with the kite. I don't think that the therapist can make believe that he isn't part of reality. We're all pressured by reality demands. We have to work. We have to love. We have to have relationships. I can't... I think I would be kidding myself if we could just all go fly a kite. If I said that to him, I think I would be, de be dishonest. I'd be inauthentic. It's not for me. I, I'm not his friend in the sense. See, I have a more technical relationship. I have to free him up so he could fly a kite with anyone. Or not. And uh, I, I think fly, the flying the kite is, has symbolic significance. When we rid it of the symbolic significance, when it's actually and literally just the calendar or just the kite, when he stops watching television when it's turned off, then we have somebody functioning in reality.